This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and today we're going to be continuing with the development of our simple game by adding a feature to track the player's progress through our levels. This is really handy right now in our level select screen because right now if I start our game and we click to choose a level, we can choose from any level that we've created and that means that the player could just jump right to the final level of the game, which usually isn't what you want. So instead, what we want to do is we want to actually track how far has the player gotten through the game and then tell our level uh, menu manager only to show the buttons for the levels that the player has reached. So this is actually pretty simple for us to do. I'm going to jump over to our scripts and open up our play session manager first. And in here, right now we've got a setup to track our current level and we can also um, set that from outside of this class using this property here. We're going to do something similar or we're going to have a variable to track the furthest level the player's reached and we're also going to have a property that will be able to get that from outside of the class. So first thing we're going to do is under our current level variable, I'm going to add another private integer and I'm going to call this furthest level. And we're going to set that equal to zero to start because um, our current level that we're playing is zero and the furthest we haven't really reached anything beyond that starting level index zero. Likewise, below our um, set property here, I'm going to add a get property. And so this one's going to be public int furthest level, furthest level with capital. And then this is going to be a get ver uh, property rather. And so this is going to return furthest level. So we can't actually set the furthest level from outside the class at this point, but we will be able to get that information, which is going to be useful for our level select menu to um, access that and see how many buttons it should create. So we'll save that there. And now where we're going to actually change this information is down in our handle level end. As we remember, um, this is where we're incrementing the current level that we're on, and then we're checking if we finished the game. However, if we haven't finished the game entirely, then we do want to increment that furthest level. So after this, after this check right here, what we can do is we're going to say, if our current level and bear in mind, this is, now, this is now kind of the next level that we're going to be going to because we've incremented it up here. If the current level we're going to is beyond the furthest level we've reached, so if current level is greater than furthest level, then we want to simply set our furthest level to be that new destination, that new farthest point. So we'll say furthest level equals current level. Now this Bear in mind, this could be a little bit weird if, if you somehow had a system where you could jump ahead like five levels. Now all of a sudden that's going to increase this five and those levels in between are going to be accessible as well. Um, if you have more of a bouncing around system where you can go to different levels around, you probably want a, something other than an integer to track this. You would probably want like a list of Booleans that you can set to true or false. But for our purposes here, this is like I say, a very kind of linear progress game. So an integer will work fine for our purposes. So with this information here, now we are successfully going to say when you complete a level and you get to the next level, that is now the furthest level that you've gotten to. And what's going to use this information is the level select UI, which I have open here, but you can certainly jump into your assets and open up the script in your project. And all we're going to have to change here is in this line right here, because right now what we're doing is we're looking at this and saying for every single level in the catalog throughout the entire catalog's length, print a button or you know instantiate a button that's going to give us access to that level. Instead, what we want to do here is we want to say, play session manager dot instance dot for this level and that's going to get us that whatever that number is if we've only reached level zero like the very first level then that's only going to work for level zero however in order to make sure that this works all the way to and including this we need to make sure we're saying less than or equal to because for example if this was just at zero then zero would not actually be less than zero, so therefore we wouldn't print any buttons and we don't want that. We want it to be less than or equal to. So with that in place, that's really all we need. We can jump back now, play our game, and we'll see that when we go to choose a level now, we only have the option of level one of level zero. And if I complete this though, and then go back to our main menu, 
and go choose level. Now we have access to both level zero and level one. I can go to level one, complete that, and we can still use our next level and go to the next level that way. I can click that here. And now we have access to all the levels in the game. So where we're going to take this next is getting into saving data in our game, including this level progress, so that when the player comes back from a previous play session, their progress is retained and it really feels like it's their session of the game versus just starting the game anew every time. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.